My name is Jared Chavez. Um, I'm a senior character artist in the games industry currently working for Firewalk Studios. When I first started my career, I really enjoyed human characters. I really liked the idea of pushing realism. But as I've gotten further in my career, I've found that I enjoy creatures and things that are a little bit more free to put my own artistic interpretation in. I like a lot of creatures. I like a lot of like dark horror that is a twist on like childhood. So I've done a lot of, you know, demonic Pokemon that I've done in the past. I've also done things that are inspiring me, like um, Winnie the Pooh is one that I'm currently working on. And that's really what I like to do with my free time is make something that's pretty and poppy, but also kind of has a dark, sinister feel or undertone to it. I think that I push the boundaries of my skills and continue to be motivated by the fact that I feel like I'm a very competitive person. I like to compete with myself. Um, I view a lot of artists and not that I necessarily compete with them, but their inspiration and they kind of drive that force for me to continue to get better. And I have that desire to know that I'm not at where I want to be. And so I continue to push every day in hopes that I can continue to improve myself, continue to prove my art and make better and nicer looking characters at the end of the day. My first experience with ZBrush was an interesting one. I found out about it when I was in college from a friend. Uh, he was the person who actually got me introduced to 3D when I was in high school, and he told me about this application called ZBrush. I saw what it was making, and I didn't really believe it. It didn't seem really possible, but it was something that I knew that I wanted to try out and see if it was really worth all the hype. And, you know, here I am today. It, it was, and it is a huge reason why I am where I am today. I think for me, the aha moment of ZBrush was really using the introduction of Sculptress Pro and the ability to use that in conjunction with like Dynamesh and just how freeing and flexible it is to really create something out of nothing. To be able to take a sphere and start from that and move it all the way to something that looks like a clay sculpture is incredible because I'm used to a pipeline of moving polys around and that is kind of constraining whereas ZBrush allowed for that freedom to just make what I wanted and to make anything. My experience with ZBrush for iPad has been great. I kind of spoke on the idea of ZBrush allowing this freedom to create whatever you wanted. I feel like it's the same kind of case with ZBrush for iPad. I've always wanted to be able to sit on my couch, sculpt something, when that idea strikes to have that opportunity to just put it down on paper. And I think that ZBrush for iPad really allows for that. And I think in the future, it allows for me and my workflow a lot more iteration, a lot more creative ideas, construction of characters quicker, and it allows me to get my ideas out a lot quicker. I see ZBrush for iPad being very helpful in all of my future projects. I think that ZBrush for iPad allows me to iterate quickly. It allows me to get my ideas out quickly and it's a great place to start your idea and you can take it as far as you want. It allows for that flexibility to really create top tier work on your iPad and then take that and move it into the next part of your process. And for me, I think that that's incredibly vital. The cyberpunk character that I created, it was based on a concept by my friend John Grello that I worked with. And the idea for that piece was to be a learning opportunity to talk about the idea of art tests and how they're used in the industry to gain your first job. And so when creating that character, I wanted to go through the process of creating the character from start to finish and showing those steps of how to make the character. And for that project, I started my initial sculpt and took it all the way to final model inside a ZBrush. I didn't really use any other tools for that project. And then from there, I was able to take it into other applications like Substance Painter and render out something that was a little bit interesting, a little bit different from what I normally created being more like monsters and stuff. But it was definitely a challenge, but I was able to make something that I ultimately ended up pretty happy with. If I was to give advice to anyone trying to break into this profession, I would say to stay consistent. It's not a quick and easy process to become good at art. And I think that you have to be adamant about working hard and really pushing even in trial and error, even in the adversity of not necessarily knowing how to do something, you have to learn how to do it. You have to be consistent and you really just have to put the time and the effort into improving yourself. And I think in the long run that it pays off.